Example six, a restaurant is currently selling their burgers for $6. From previous sales, they know that at $6 per burger, they will sell 120 of them. But after doing some research, they discover that for each $1 price increase, they will sell 10 less burgers. What should the restaurant charge if they want to make the most revenue? So they want to make the most revenue. They want to maximize their profit. Okay, so I'm not going to start with A, B, C, or D here. I'm going to go down to E, and we're going to try to set up a pattern so that it helps you know what we should let X be. So in this chart, okay, we've got columns that say the number of $1 increases, the selling price of each burger, and then the number of burgers sold, and then what would the revenue what would the revenue be? How much would they take in from selling those? So if we don't increase the price by any $1 increments, so I'm just going to say right now, currently, the selling price for each burger is $6 and they will sell 120 burgers. Well, what will their revenue be? How much money will they take in? Well, to get the revenue, we're going to go price multiplied by the number sold. So if I take 6 times 120, okay, so $6 a burger times 120 burgers, I am going to get $720. Now, what if I decided to chance it and increase the price by $1? So the number of times I'm going to increase the price by a dollar. I'm just going to do that once. I'm going to be real cautious. So if I increase the price by $1, the new price, now this is going to seem a little bit odd, but I'm going to write it in this way to help you set up for my variable. So I'm going to take my original price of $6. I'm going to increase it by $1 one time. Okay, I'm going to take the original price of 6 plus I'll increase it by $1 one time. So this one here relates to this one here. Now, I know that that's 7. Now, how many burgers am I going to sell? I will sell 10 less burgers. Every time I increase the price, 10 less people are going to say, I'll buy a burger. So I would take the 120 and I'm going to lose 10 customers one time. Again, why once? Because I only increased the price by a dollar one time. So I know that 120 minus 10 will give me 110 burgers. Now, what would my revenue be? I would take the price of 7 times the number I'm selling, which is 110. 7 times 110 is going to give me 770. Well, have a look at that. Compare that to my first line in this chart. I'm actually doing better. $770 taken in versus $700. So maybe I need to be more brave. Maybe I need to increase the price by a dollar two times. So again, I know that that means my price over here is eight. But how I'm getting that is I take my original base price, I increase it by $1, two times. That two relates to the number of times I'm chancing it and increasing the price. Now, I'm going to lose another 10 customers. I know that I'm now only going to have 100 burgers sold. But how did I get that? Well, I started off selling 120. 
I lost 10 every time I increased the price. And how many times did I increase the price over here? Twice. So it's 120 minus 10 times 2. That's how I'm getting 100. Now, if I find out what my revenue is, $8 a burger times 100, 8 times 100, oh my goodness, I'm doing even better here. I'm now taking in $800. Let's try this one more time. How about if I increase the price by a dollar three times? So I know I started off at $6, I increased it by a dollar three times, so I know the selling price is nine, but how did I get that? I started off at six, I increased the price by one dollar, and I did that three times. What happens over here? Well, 120, I'm gonna lose 10 sales for each time I increased the price, and I did that three times, 120 minus 30 is 90. So what happens here? $9 times 90 burgers, $810. I'm going up and up and up. I seem to be doing better and better. So let's do this. I mean, how, how do I know? How do I know how many times to increase the price by a dollar? So here's where we're going to bring in a variable. I don't know whether this should be one or two or three times. So how about if I just say X is going to be the number of times I increase the price by a dollar. Well, what's going to happen over here? The price was originally six. I increased the price by one dollar. How many times? X times. What happens to the number of burgers sold? Well, it was 120, but I lost 10 sales for every time I increased the price by a dollar. And again, I did that X times. So then just tidying this, this is six plus X. That's my price. This is 120 minus 10 X. That's the number sold. So how do I get my revenue? Well, I said up here revenue is price times number sold. So I'm going to take the price, which is 6 plus x. Really, guys, that's 6 plus 1x, OK? And actually, maybe for emphasis, that's how I should write it. So 6 plus 1x times the number sold, 120 minus 10x. And it's this right here that is super important. It's also this X, knowing what that is. X, guys, okay, what X is, and I'm gonna put it down here, I know we'll probably write it up top in a bit, but we're gonna say, let X be the number of $1 increases. It's the number of times I increase the price by a dollar. And then of course, the price is six plus X, the number of sold is 120 minus 10 X. So let's now go up here. It says for A, when working with revenue functions, the unknown variable Okay, the unknown variable represents the number of increases or decreases. Define a variable for this question. So that's what we wrote below. Let X be the number of 
increases. Or you could say it's the number of times I increase the price by a dollar. Okay, it's the number of times. Actually, just it's the number of times the price is increased by one dollar. Now, represent the selling price of each burger. We have that down here. Our selling price is six plus X or six plus one X. Oh, frozen screen coming right back. So represent the selling price of each burger. Well, the price is going to be six plus one X. Represent the number of burgers. Well, the number of burgers sold, we wrote that down here, and that was 120 minus 10 X. So 120 minus 10 X. Now, D says a revenue function is the number of items sold multiplied the, by the price of each item. So a revenue function, we take the number sold multiplied by the price. So represent the revenue as a function of the selling price. So we would write or we would take and say that our revenue is equal to, we take the price, six plus one X, and then we multiply by 120 minus 10 X. That's our revenue function. Remember we're taking price multiplied by the number sold. Now, just in keeping with what we've always done in the past, remember how I said, let Y be whatever you're trying to minimize or maximize. We want to maximize our revenue, okay? It's our revenue that we want to maximize. So switch colors here. We want to maximize revenue. So that's what I'm gonna let Y be. I am going to instead rewrite this and I'm gonna say let Y be the maximum revenue. So how do I get revenue? I take price six plus one X, and I multiply it by the number sold, 120 minus 10 X. Now, I wanna know where the vertex of that is. When does that function have a maximum? Okay, I need the vertex. I need the vertex of this function. So, just going to zoom out to see how much room I have here. Hmm. I think I can fit this all along the side. I need the vertex, which means I need to have this in standard or vertex form. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to foil these. So y will equal 6 times 120 is 720. 6 times negative 10x is negative 60x. 1x times 120 is positive 120x. And then 1x times negative 10 is negative 10x squared. I'm now going to tidy that up. So I'll have y equals, I'm going to put my x squareds first, negative 10x squared. 
I have 120x minus 60x. 120 minus 60 is positive 60x plus 720. So what I need to do here is I need to write this in vertex form. So you know that I'm going to group the negative 10x squared together with the 60x. The positive 720 stays outside. Now, I've got this minus 10. That's got to get factored out. So y will equal, out comes the negative 10. Negative 10x squared divided by negative 10 is just x squared. 60 divided by negative 10 is a negative 6x. And then I leave my space with my positive 720 there. So now we need to form a perfect square trinomial. We take one half of negative six, which is negative three, and then we take that negative three and we square it to be a nine. So it's positive nine that I need in that bracket. Now, I really did not add nine when that red arrow goes through. Negative 10 times nine. Negative 10 times 9 is negative 90. The opposite of negative 90 is a positive 90. That's what I need to balance. So now, factoring that perfect square trinomial, I've got negative 10. I'll have x. I need a minus because of the minus 6x. What's the square root of 9? 3. And on the end, 720 plus 90, 720 plus 90 is 810. So there's my standard or vertex form. I can identify P being 3, Q being 810. So my vertex located at P and Q is 3, and 810. Remember that's x and that's y. Now here's where it's important that we have defined x. Okay, x from way up here. x is the number of times I increase the price by a dollar. I got an x value of 3, so I should increase the price by a dollar three times. Okay, what this represents, it means we should, I don't know if it's actually we, this is probably a person in here. Oh, it's just a restaurant. Okay, how about if I use they, because I don't think I'm involved in this restaurant. So I'm going to put they should increase the price by one dollar three times. They should increase the price by a dollar three times. Now, what would that make the selling price? We'll look up here we have that our price is 6 plus 1x. Number of burgers, 120 minus 10x. So, oh, frozen screen, coming right back, maybe. So, what will that make the price? Well, we know that the price was 6 plus 1x, and x is 3. So 6 plus 1 times 3 makes the selling price $9. What will my number sold be? That was 120 minus 10x. So 120 minus 10 times my x value of 3 
So that's going to be 90 burgers. So then what will my revenue be? My revenue is going to be $9 a burger times 90 burgers, which is $810. And notice that that 810 is the maximum revenue. Where else are we seeing that? It's the Y coordinate of the vertex. And that's because up here, I said, let Y be the maximum revenue. Now, just for interest sake, guys, what if I'd have thought, well, I should just keep going? Why can't I increase the price by another dollar? Okay, so I just want to do a little, a little experiment here before we finish. So it's kind of like a little hmm moment or a thinking moment. What if... The price was increased by one dollar four times. Well, that would mean that the price would be six plus one times four, which is ten dollars a burger. Numbers sold. Okay, the number sold started off at 120. We lose 10 four times. So that's going to be 120 minus 40, which is 80 burgers sold. What will my revenue be? My revenue will be $10 a burger times 80 burgers, which is $800. How is that comparing to what we got over here by increasing the price by $3? Well, this is worse. So increasing the price by a dollar three times is definitely the best that that restaurant can do. And that, or that finishes up then example six and actually finishes up the whole unit on quadratic functions.